guys, welcome. Um, I wanted to do a quick video just about supplies that are needed for virtual paint nights. So that's one of the most common questions that we get with Yay Maker. So I just wanted to go over my suggested supply list. Okay. So we need a surface to start with, right? So we're gonna need something to paint on. Traditionally, standard stretch canvases are fabulous. They're called stretcher, stretched canvases because they're on stretcher bars, right? Canvases stretched over the side of those stretcher bars and stapled in. Now there are canvas panels available as well. Um, and then also, if you are really getting into paint nights, and gosh, those stretched canvases are stacking up, another thing you can do is buy canvas pads. So here's a canvas pad, a paper. So you get about 10, 10 each in these. Again, if you are just starting out, I would recommend just buying a pack of canvases, you can get nine by 12, 12 by 16, or 16 by 20. That's what I have here. This is a 16 by 20. Next, we need paint. Okay, what I recommend is student grade acrylics. Okay, this is a fantastic set from Blick. It runs about 22 to $25. Um, it's got a great uh, combination here. We've got white, we've got black, Phthalo green, ultramarine blue, cadmium red, and cadmium yellow. Okay, these are four ounce tubes, so it's enough for quite a few projects. Um, and again, it's a great value. Okay, so I often find that people are using craft paint, right? So, craft smart brand acrylic paint. So, it says acrylic paint on there, right? Now these are great, they're very inexpensive. They come in a wide variety of colors. You can go to Michael's, get your you know, a percentage off coupon and pack up a whole, pick up a whole pack of them uh, very inexpensively. And they're great. One of the issues with these is that when we mix them together, okay, so when we mix these together, sometimes when we combine red and yellow, we get more of a grayish tone. With traditional acrylics, we are able to get really vibrant colors, uh, really nice pigmentation, so here's my thought. If you are committed to using craft paint, that is absolutely fine. Let's have fun, we'll work through it. But rather than sticking with the traditional colors, so a red, yellow, and a blue to mix with, perhaps a green um, and black and white, if you're gonna use craft paint for the project, take a look at the initial photo. Grab the colors that you see on the canvas. So if you are doing this fantastic Sunset Palm Paradise project, I would want you to grab a mid-tone blue, a purple, an orange, a red, a pink, perhaps a teal, black and white. Uh, we need brushes, right? So this is a really common one. What brushes should I get? I recommend this pack right here, and I'll have links to all of this. This is such an amazing set of brushes. Okay, oops. Now, if you aren't gonna buy this exact pack, that's absolutely fine. But you do wanna have, at minimum, a large flat brush. This is a one inch flat, okay? This is a one inch flat. So you'd want a large flat brush, three quarter to one inch, one inch is better. You can really cover a lot of ground quickly with this brush. So a large flat brush, a medium sized round brush. Okay, so this is a medium sized round brush. It's, I mean, estimated about half an inch there at the base. A medium sized round brush, a small detail brush, right? Small for putting in all those fun details and also a medium sized flat brush. This one is about a half inch wide, the base. Okay, so this is the, I would say the minimum you want. A large flat brush, a medium sized flat brush, a medium sized brown brush, and a small detail brush, okay? You need a palette. You could use, oh gosh, you could use this cardboard, uh, <laughs> anything you like. I mean, top of a large Tupperware container where maybe you lost the bottom, that would work fabulously. Um, we have, I use plates, little plates, disposable. Uh, paper plates are great, but they kind of suck up your paint, which is unfortunate. You can use plates, or you can grab a traditional uh, palette and just know that you'll continue working with it. And those are inexpensive as well. You can find those 
very, very inexpensively. You also need a water cup. So you need something to put your paint water in. I just use old jars and uh, paper towels or a rag. Okay, I use a rag, kind of try to conserve when I can. Um, so let's see, in addition, a couple extra supplies that are really, really helpful. If you can do it, since you are at home, grab yourself a hair dryer. So a lot of times when we're working with these very layered backgrounds, we need stuff to dry up quickly. Right? So if you can have a hair dryer handy where you can just quickly hit your canvas with a little bit of hot air, gosh, it dries stuff up so fast and it's really easy for us to kind of get through that painting in the two hour period. If you don't have a hair dryer, I have a hand fan that I love to use, so that works as well. I want to mention, just to kind of ensure that you have a great time at paint night, I'm gonna be so excited to paint with you. A um, Couple things, log in early. Right? So if you haven't used Zoom before, even if you have, it's beneficial to you to log in 10 to 15 minutes early um, into the Zoom link um, that you're provided. The, the reason for that is if there is any issues with um, connectivity, with you getting into the Zoom, um, you'll be able to know uh, at that point. If you log in at the exact time we start and you have connectivity issues and it takes you 10 minutes to get into the meeting, unfortunately, you'll be 10 minutes behind. You know, first part of the meeting, we do go through, you know, materials we're working with, etc. But it, it kind of makes you feel rushed, right? And we don't want that. We don't want you to rush. So do yourself a favor, log in early. During the class, ask questions, interact. In general, we do ask that people stay muted, um, just because if we get a lot of you know dogs barking and background noise, it can be distracting, but unmute yourself or chat to us, ask questions. It helps us to figure out where you are, whether you're a beginner, intermediate, completely advanced, professional painter. Helps us to figure that out. And also, usually when you have a question, somebody else out in the class has the exact same question. Right, so please ask away. Interact with us, show us your paintings regularly. Right, that helps us to know if you're good with the step, if you need more instruction, if you need help, you know, interact with us. It, it makes the whole experience so much more enjoyable. So much of this experience, right, is about connecting with each other and sharing a love of painting. So let's do that, right? <clears throat> okay, finally, judgment-free zone, okay? So I want you guys to do your best as we paint, not to judge yourself or anybody else. I think that's the hardest part is letting go of that little part in our mind that's saying, gosh, you know, my painting doesn't look like hers. Oh, you know, that tree doesn't look quite right. That, that makes the, the process of painting unenjoyable. And it should be fun. Painting can be uh, meditative, right? It can be therapeutic. It can be so good for stress and anxiety. And if you are telling yourself that your painting isn't good enough, it's not going to feel good at the end. So do your best to let go of that feeling that it has to be perfect, that it has to look like an example or like my painting. It doesn't. It's your painting and the whole point of it is to relax and enjoy the process. Okay, so that's it. I think all of those things will help us have a great time together. Okay, so again, I will go ahead and put in links to uh, canvases, to paint types, to brushes that I showed you. Um, and if you have any questions, of course you can email me, that information is there as well. Um, I sure do look forward to painting with you. We will have a fantastic time together. And yeah, enjoy yourselves, take care of yourselves, and I'll look forward to seeing you guys soon.